For weeks, many of you have been asking us on a daily basis whether we would have a repeat of the 94 ride if the Canucks lost. The stories that were produced were often cringe-inducing. And for weeks, we predicted this day, this nightmare, this shame would never come. Despite those predictions behind the scenes, we had always been preparing for the worst. Last night, those preparations became a reality as we quickly shifted from a meet-and-greet tactic to one of crowd dispersal and crowd safety. Our lines were flooded and continue to be flooded today with tips from Vancouverites and others who want to help. Doctors in the crowd step forward to help with the injured. Our downtown hospitals performed in an outstanding manner. But even with those assets in place, our city was still vulnerable to a number of young men and women disguised as Canucks fans who were actually criminals and anarchists. These were people who came equipped with masks, goggles and gasoline, even fire extinguishers that they would use as weapons. We recognized some of those same criminals among them as those who took part in the vandalism during the Winter Olympics. This criminal element within the crowd was responsible for the burning of 15 cars, including two police cars. As you saw, there was extensive property damage and looting. Our hearts go out to those businesses, especially the small ones, who suffered crippling losses last night. We understand that these types of losses can be devastating. While we had triple the number of riders last night, we were able to bring the situation under control in half the time it took us back in 1994. In three hours, the worst was over and most of the crowd had gone home. But I also want to assure our citizens that no one comes into our city and creates this kind of mayhem and destruction with impunity. We made close to 100 arrests last night and we have every intention of making many more as we aggressively investigate the crimes that occurred. 